Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome for to joining us at this Halal in Travel Global Summit hosted by Crescent Rating. And I'm very happy to welcome you to the session this afternoon, which is Destination versus Experience. What's driving the next phase of travel? Um, my name is Dr. Yunus Tan, and I'm Senior Lecturer at SIM Global Education at the Singapore Institute of Management. Um, and I'm a lecturer and a researcher in tourism, and I do mainly research in this area. So joining me today in our session here is our two special guests, John Marshall, who's the Chief Stewardship Officer at NYC Borough Pass, and Monica Sanchez, who is the Director of Spain Tourism Board. Now, before we jump into our session, I have the pleasure of introducing our guests for today. Firstly, John, uh, welcome, John. Thank and, you. Uh, yes. It's really nice to have you here, and um, I look forward to our conversation. Let me just introduce John. So Mr. John Marshall is the Chief Stewardship Officer of NYC Borough Pass. And he's a veteran sales, marketing, and business development professional who has proudly spent his career representing the icons of New York City. He uses his creativity, collaborative nature, and passion for storytelling to unlock the hidden opportunities to benefit brands. And John, founder and Chief Stewardship Officer, well, NYT uh, Borough Pass, as mentioned, and he's the first. This is the first sightseeing pass designed to intentionally uplift the stories of the people and places um, of New York City. So, welcome again, John, to our session. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And our next guest is, is Monica Sanchez from Spain Tourism Board. Hello, Monica. Welcome to the hello, session. Hello. How are you? Thank you for having me here. No problem. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. And let me just introduce you. So Monica is Director Spain Tourism Board. She is a Fulbright Scholar. She has a Master's Degree in Tourism Administration from the George Washington um, University. She has a Bachelor's Degree in Law and Certificate in European Union Law. Monica is a senior level civil servant with 30 years of experience in tourism, branding, market research, and public management. And she has held various leadership and cabinet level positions within the Tourism Board of Spain, both in the US, in America, as well as the Spain headquarters. So uh, welcome, uh, Monica, and I'm so happy to, that you're joining us as well. Mm, thank you. Okay, so um, I suppose now that we've introduced each other, we should get going on this exciting session yeah, that we have, which is, as I mentioned, looking at uh, destination-driven versus experience-driven destinations. And um, as we've seen, the traveler preferences have evolved, yeah? Uh, over time, and perhaps you can share with us and the audience what you think these changes um, have had an impact on how we can balance the destination-driven versus experience-driven uh, travel. Uh, Monica, would you like to start since you are yes, top of my here? <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it is. It is true, as you say. Um, uh, in, in the past, people were more likely to choose their destination based on the th on things like the weather, the scenery, the cultural attractions. And now, uh, more and more people are choosing their destination based on the activities they want to do. Mm. And there are several reasons for this shift, I, I think. One reason is that people have more access to information than ever before. Mm. Uh, with the internet, it's very easy to research different activities, find out what is available in different destinations. And also, um, people right now are more time conscious than ever before. So they don't want to waste their time traveling to a destination that doesn't have anything they are interested in doing. You know, all what you have mm. been in the past, you know, stuck in a place and say, oh, I booked for two days. What do I do here? You know, so today's also travelers are increasingly uh, seeking unique, immersive experience that educates them and allows them to connect uh, with the local culture. You know, just mm -hmm. better than you know, just ticking off. You know, their bucket list. I think also this change has not been done 
only on the side of the tourists. I think mm. this shift has also been driven by the destinations themselves mm. because destinations, they need to attract and retain. They need to bring repeated visitors. They need mm. to bring tourists into less touristic places of the country and also extend the tourism all year round. And like for example, in Spain, we have been working in activity related products and promotion of these activities for a number of years, creating clusters around a specific interests and olive oil, Spanish language, ecotourism, Iberian ham, caliphate, root, mm -hmm. castles and palace, uh, you know, uh, you name it. So mm -hmm. this allows us to see the demand from traditional uh, touristic hotspots toward less and no destinations. And mm. this benefit local economies and help reduce mm. over tourism um, in popular destinations also. So, you know, I think it's a mix of, of everything. Mm. Yeah, I, I think Monica hit the nail right on the head. Um, you know, more and more we see things since, since, since the pandemic, a number of studies have seen that the cultural traveler has more than doubled. Right, more and more people are identifying that way. They want to get off the beaten path. They want to go where the locals are and do the things the locals do, eat local mm. food, participate in local ceremonies. So we're mm. seeing a lot of that, uh, you know, go right up. But attached to that, people are more concerned about their wellness now more mm. than ever, right? The trend was already on the rise before a global pandemic that changed everybody's lives. But now even more, people are focused on things that are, that are good for their bodies, but also their mindfulness. And that mm. often the impact experience is something that really allows them to do that. And then I think, you know, the one of the biggest buzzwords in travel over the course of the last five years is Instagrammable, right? It's how does something, how can somebody show where they've been on social yeah. media? And I think that kind of falls into two buckets, right? You have the 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 traditional, beautiful nature, city center, even you know, nature or city center places that everyone's taking pictures of. And so you need to take mm. that picture, other, whether it be the Grand Canyon or, or the Empire State Building or, or something like that, um, or these new pop-up experiences that are built just for those Instagram mm. moments, right? Which I'm personally not a particular fan of. I, I like the, the, the former uh, option, um, but that's something new too, that people, it's an element that people are more and more building into their um, mm. operations and their marketing as well. Yeah, I, and, and I'm so glad they said that. Oh, I, I think we've lost Monica, so I hope that she'll uh, log back in yes. and get back in and join us uh, in, in a little while. But I, w I was really glad that you mentioned that because just now also Monica was mentioning about how, you know, uh, customers of different clusters are driven by immersive and unique experiences. And then you were talking about how cultural travel, authenticity, but Instagrammable moments. So it's interesting. One of the questions we were asking was also how do we then, you know, adapt the offerings? Oh, welcome back, Monica. We I don't know you. what I did. It just went <laughs> by itself. Everything was on. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> I am okay. back. I am back. That's great. We were just talking about how uh, both yourself and, and John were talking about, you know, the need for unique and immersive experiences and, and with the different clusters of tourists. But John was also mentioning about how these days there are a lot of, you know, Instagrammable moments that people are seeking. So the interesting next question I have to throw it at you is that perhaps then how can we adapt our offerings, right? You talked about uh, immersive experiences and all that, but how do we make those uh, immersive experiences authentic and personalized in such a social media driven and Instagrammable uh, kind of environment? What are your thoughts on that? John, maybe you'd like to get the ball rolling on that feature. No, that yeah, no, absolutely. That's 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 an interesting question. The, the concept of Instagrammable and personalized, right? Because you yeah. tend to see when you think about Instagram, you see the same picture and you're just kind of swapping yeah. out the person. And I think mm -hmm. at that point, it's more the journey to get there that you can personalize. Mm -hmm. It's how you get the person from point A to point B and the the, mm -hmm. the experience that they have along the way. That's the real opportunity. Um, that destinations mm -hmm. in particular have an opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, make sure speaks to that individual traveler. Mm. Okay, and and can you give us an example of how uh, NYC Borough Pass does some of that in terms of the journey? It was interesting you were talking about the journey of the traveler. Yeah, we we like to say that with our pass, the journey is the destination, mm -hmm. right? And so what we do mm -hmm. is outside we try to move people outside of the traditional city center, which is mm -hmm. Midtown Manhattan. And yes. so when, by 
showcasing points that are in the of the, in the other boroughs of the city in Queens and mm -hmm. the Bronx and Staten Island uh, in Brooklyn we're inviting people to move more freely to intentionally mm -hmm. go from the city center into local neighborhoods, into local communities, and Ooh. by that very nature, interact with those local people, eat mm. at the local restaurants, shop, shop at the local stores, be on local mm. transport. Um, and that in itself to me is the surprise and delight, if you will. It's the part that, mm. that as, as, yep. as destinations or as experience providers, we can't, um, we don't have full control of. And for me, mm. that's where some of the, the most exciting moments are when you travel. Great. Uh, thanks so much, uh, John, for sharing that. So, Monica, yeah. over to you. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, joining on what um, John was saying, I think, I mean, these platforms, you know, yes, the travelers have more control over the travel planning, uh, you mm. know, and there's the Instagram, but, you know, the tourism mm. destination, we can also mm. work with them because with the, with the photos, with the videos, we can build in that anticipation mm. for the trip. John was talking mm. about the journey. I mean, mm. within the journey, it starts, you know, they say they, they, they talk about the five uh, steps of the journey. And the journey yeah. starts when you start dreaming about that destination. So that pictures, those videos uh, in Instagram and TikTok, they mm. make you start dreaming and they motivate you. They motivate the travel and uh, the traveler. And they, uh, you know, it's an incentive to go to that destination. So the photos, mm. the videos, the reviews, you know, they also help you to decide in a destination or not, I mean, in a positive or negative way, depending on, you know, what review is saying. I know because mm. it's bad, but maybe because it's not targeted to your uh, segment. Yeah. Um, and I think it also is very important that sometimes this uh, on life and the streaming and so on, it helps, um, it helps um, set realistic goals, expectations when you go yeah. to a destination, because sometimes mm -hmm. a picture is, is beautiful and, you know, but then you arrive to the destination and it, I mean, yes, that photo is beautiful and the surrounding yeah. area is not, but when mm -hmm. you have the videos, the Instagram and the TikToks and the stream live, it gives you the whole idea. So it motivates, mm -hmm. it, uh, it gives you that incentive to travel, but also mm -hmm. set your expectatives right where they should be more or less i think mm -hmm. yeah so it's, it's good for the traveler and it's good also for the destination mm. and and it's really interesting that um you were, were sharing about it, monica because you know talking about the social media and the digital platforms um and you were mentioning about the reviews and the expectations and how some of these streaming uh you know and showcasing some of the realistic goals and and expectations as they before they even go on their uh, journey. Mm -hmm. So, can you share with us maybe how perhaps uh, Spain Tourism has uh, used such platforms, for example, yeah, to to um, affect or to enhance the traveler's journey? Mm -hmm. Well, we use I think more or less all the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, to some of them, we are like late arrivals, like TikTok is, you know, we are we are a little bit late to that, but we already have one. What we have is that uh, uh, all of them, 70% um, of our content, it comes from our headquarters. So we keep the same image, the same, uh, you know, uh, all across the world. We have 33 offices abroad, so we keep the same. And then 30% is very targeted to the mm. next, uh, market where we are promoting. Yeah. So, mm. you know, there's, 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 there's the flow that is the same. Mm. And mm. we have a lot of successful with our gastronomy. <laughs> All the videos, you know, with local restaurants, mm. with food. Mm. Uh, it seems like the whole world is full of foodies, <laughs> you know. So we use our social media to promote, um, of course, um, our scenery, the coastline, but we need to differentiate ourselves from other mm. destinations. And yep. we have two, well, we have several, but you know, two of the uh, biggest elements we have is our lifestyle. Mm. Uh, you know, the way we relate with friends, family, and you know, uh, uh, with food. So mm. this is something that we portray very often in all our social media. Hmm. Okay. Yes, I, I do. I do agree with your your uh, comment about gastronomy and food. I mean, coming from Singapore, you know, we are all about food. Oh right? yeah. So, 
Yeah, I am in Singapore, Singapore, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that's a, a big part of that. So, yes, I, it, that resonates uh, with me as well. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And and how about, uh, over to you, John, what do you think in terms of for the case of uh, NYC? Because you talked about the journey just now, yeah, uh, of the experience of the traveler. Um, so how, how does, uh, you know, social media and digital platforms uh, come into play in terms of, um, you know, the expectations and motivations of your visitors? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard. I, when I go on Instagram, and I don't know if it's just me, I am just showered with New York City content. Uh, we, we have mm -hmm. so many influencers here. There are so many visitors here that I think New York City has been covered in just about any way that it can be covered. Every mm. restaurant's been covered three, four, five times. All the Instagramable moments uh, have, have been shared. And I think that that's been mm. really huge for us. It's that organic storytelling, right? The destination mm. can 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 put the content out and it's going to be great and it's going to be wonderful. But at the end mm. of the day, people see that it's an organization that's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And that helps in the journey. But what really motivates a traveler is to see that mm. their fellow travelers have eaten at that place or taken that picture or gone to that attraction or mm. or been on that boat. Um, and so I think that 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 New York City has been has had a, a huge um, advantage um, from having that much content put out. Mm. And, and it's interesting because you were talking about uh, organic storytelling and, and I read from your profile, one of the things that you look at is creative ways in, you know, using storytelling as part of the, the experience. Um, and can you share with us maybe an, an example in which that was, you know, used uh, within that social media and digital space? Sure. Uh, our uh, we just launched uh, our company in mid February, so we're just about three months old. Three months old today, uh, actually, as we're recording this. Uh, and so, and so we um, our opening campaign was uh, find your city, uh, and we wanted to really motivate a traveler to find the New York City that was special to them. And so, in order to do that, we actually went out to the all five boroughs of the city uh, with a big sign asking people if they were from that uh, neighborhood. Uh, and then we we recorded interviews with locals in the area, completely unprompted, unscripted, and asked them what their favorite things to do were, what their favorite mm -hmm. memories in those places were, you know, why, what their advice to visitors to to those neighborhoods were. And we've got some really great um, content that's on our social mm -hmm. platforms right now mm -hmm. um, from mm -hmm. locals who really gave heartfelt responses, uh, who really mm -hmm. took it upon themselves to be ambassadors to their city. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I think that I think it did really well for us, um, and we're going. And that's probably the content that we're going to stick with moving forward. Mm, okay, that's that's interesting because uh, just now, just before this question, we were talking about uh, personalization and authenticity, and and definitely the kind of unscripted conversational style of such, um, you know, experiences does add a lot to to that as well. So uh, thanks for sharing uh, the example, um, and and which brings us to. You know, the, the next question that we have is when we talk about, um, you know, experience driven travel. And one of the things that we look at here, I have, uh, is uh, looking at offering diverse and engaging experiences, yeah, that appeals to different traveler segments. Um, and, you know, how we can strike a balance in the beginning, just now, uh, Monica was talking about how in the past, uh, if we were looking at destinations and now we're looking at experiences and different clusters right, of our travelers uh, and the unique features. So maybe I'll, I'll uh, start with Monica and if you can share with us how um, you, know, you can strike the balance between promoting the destination, but yet at the same time being able to offer diverse and engaging uh, experiences because you mentioned just now about different clusters Right. Yeah. 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 So, I think the first thing uh, would be um, understanding what is your target mm -hmm. audience, mm -hmm. uh, what are their interests, their needs, their motivations for traveling. Mm -hmm. So we need to conduct always, you know, uh, market research because mm -hmm. that helps us identify the needs and the preferences of each segment, and you know, mm -hmm. then we can tailor the products accordingly. Then we need to create a different experiences because not all travelers are looking for the same thing. Yeah. Um, some people want to relax and escape from you know the stress of everyday life, mm -hmm. and others want to be active and experience mm -hmm. new things. And mm -hmm. for some people, being active means to go trekking a high mountain or you know 
jumping from a bridge mm -hmm. and from others you know just being active means you know mm -hmm. do a tour around uh you know cheese factories or uh you know just go horse riding so mm -hmm. the destination should offer a variety of experiences uh, for different right. traveler segments uh, cultural mm -hmm. activities adventure sports wellness and relaxation and young uh, was saying mm -hmm. gastronomic experience because mm -hmm. by offering a range of uh, experiences that is you know you can appeal to a range, mm -hmm. uh, a bigger range of, of travelers. You also have to create the thing itineraries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you can cater to different interests and preferences, you know, like you can cater to, uh, as I was saying, you know, the adventure sport, uh, if you are a thrill seeker, uh, food and wine itineraries for foodies, or the mm -hmm. route of the caliphate for Muslim travelers, because mm -hmm. this uh, helps the travelers to find the experiences that are most relevant to, to their interests. And you also have to partner with local businesses. Uh, and this, yeah. you know, when we created those clusters in Spain, um, mm. we put together um, transportation accommodation uh, suppliers of products and services. So mm. that way, you know, the experience is more authentic, is, is, is immersive, mm. and, you know, it supports the local community. Yeah, mm. you know, and then, of course, you have to highlight some unique features. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, what is the, separates you from the rest of the destinations mm. and you know that makes your um, destination unique or you know attract mm. the tourists and mm. you know we will use of course all the social media we were talking before you know to to put the into practice but I, I mean I think those are the main points uh, to, to mm. be able to work on. Okay thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that uh, Monica and, and how about yourself John um, do you think like because you were mentioning just now how NYC has the different boroughs and, and so forth. Uh, does that actually make a difference in terms of that or more the experiences that we are looking at? Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you say in the question, I think it's the, a matter of finding the balance. New York City is, is fortunate to be home to a number of icons, you know, bucket mm -hmm. list items, if you will. Um, but the, the richness of our city goes deeper than that. And so one of one of my uh, the one of the most interesting studies I've seen recently was a study done about two years ago by the uh, Netherlands Board of Tourism and Conventions uh, in conjunction with uh, Travel with Zoe, a personal digital assistant. And what they did, I thought was extremely fascinating. They had a control group of 150 people uh, mm -hmm. They broke them up into four different groups. Uh, one of those groups got a map on an app that gave them all of the most popular things to do in the Netherlands. The okay. Another group got a map that gave them some off the beaten path things. Mm -hmm. And then two of the groups got personal, personalized um, kind of feedback from Travel with Zoe. Uh, mm -hmm. And what they found at the end of it was that the two groups that had the static maps both reported the equal amount of quality. They were both mm -hmm. equally happy, whether they did the bucket list item or something mm -hmm. that that they that no that less people traditionally did. They enjoyed yeah. their vacation equally mm -hmm. the same. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that really says a lot about how destinations market in the future, right? For mm -hmm. using New York City, for example, maybe you use Central Park as the thing that you use to get people into the city. But once they're there, highlighting what things that there are to do outside of that mm -hmm. city center, you know, That's really true. isn't going to change how much somebody enjoys their trip. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the other fascinating part of it is that the group that had used the personalized digital assistant travel with Zoe, mm -hmm. they enjoyed their trip the most because mm -hmm. they found that they got the most personalized experience, that they were told mm -hmm. where to go and what to do based on what they liked and what they wanted to do. And so I think that I kind of use that little study as a guiding light mm -hmm. as I mm -hmm. continue on my path to build this because it really speaks to how we should be marketing a destination, right? Marketing mm -hmm. um, not just the main things, but the entirety of the city, uh, the entirety, the entirety of the country, and doing so in a way that speaks to all of our visitors. Mm, mm. And and actually, that that's really really great that you brought that up because in recent years as well, and it's true how maybe an iconic. Uh, a destination or attraction can bring people there, like, you know, Central Park, for example, but when they're there, they, to be able to distribute the experiences across the whole destination, and as Monica said just now, by having different clusters and different experiences, that enriches uh, the immersiveness and engagement of that. So, and, and 
it's, it's so great as I'm talking to you, uh, both of you, because, you know, it's as if you are preempting our next question, which I was what I was going to ask you, because you were talking about going to different areas in the destination. You were talking about uh, working with local stakeholders, yeah? uh, uh, contributing to the local economy and communities and so forth. So actually, the next question I had was on sustainability, responsible tourism uh, at the destinations. And so how do you think, uh, whether in your experience at your own destinations or what you've seen, how does, um, you know, how can we integrate practices for sustainability, sustainable tourism and responsible tourism uh, into the development and promotion of such experience-driven uh, travel offerings? I, I, I'll jump in there. Um, in my previous experience with uh, NYC Tourism and Conventions, um, one of the programs that they have is Tourism Ready. Uh, and Tourism Ready is a, a program where it invites suppliers, local suppliers, to take part in a year-long class that prepares them to engage in the travel trade. So that's mm. really inviting locals in uh, to that have local stories to tell and giving them the proper training um, and the proper the know-how to go out and bring, and develop products um, and showcase their products that can that enrich the the, uh, the destination, right? There's also a, a, a program called uh, the Pathways Project in the U.S. Um, and that's focused on bringing education, employment, and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. opportunities to underrepresented communities to make sure that there's a there's an even playing field mm -hmm. so that all can enter the travel space. And when we do that, that's where the diversity, right, the the inclusion, that's where that comes in, mm -hmm. and that's only going to make um, a destination more attractive. Um, mm -hmm. What we're trying to do uh, at NYC Borough Pass by as I say, intentionally moving people throughout the destination, you know, we want to uh, showcase those experiences, but more importantly for me, it's about the equitable distribution of the direct spend, right? In New York City, we, we are very lucky to get um, tax, right, the tax benefit of all those tourism dollars that are spent, but that's something different mm -hmm. than the direct spend in those local restaurants, at those local mm -hmm. shops, with those local, um, you know, Ubers and Lyfts, if you will. And, and so I think that that's, that's kind of the next layer, getting people out of the city center, out of that really clustered, busy space that, you know, honestly yeah. doesn't make for a great experience for locals when you have that many people in one space and moves them around the entire city. Um, and then I think the last, but not not definitely not the least important of which, uh, is an investment in, in infrastructure for accessibility. Yeah. To make sure that not only are we make, not only are we asking people to come to our destination, but that we're meeting people when they get here, and we're making mm -hmm. sure that they can experience uh, the destination in the same ways uh, that that all travelers can. So I think those those are probably the top uh, the top mm -hmm. most important for me. Okay, um, and it's interesting that you brought it up, John, because um, you know there's research that talks about um, accessibility, right, and how sometimes destinations don't think about accessibility once they get there within the destination and so you're talking about um, investments in infrastructure and the flow of tourism within the destination so uh, thanks for sharing that because you know people only think about getting to the destination but accessibility and the flow of tourism uh, within the destination as well as part of those sustainability uh, aspects that we look at so thank oh, absolutely you. and i think i think people underestimate how large the the that population is that needs mm. that concern and mm. how much you can gain from it you know very mm. often i think people think that they're just checking a box because yeah. there's a law for it or something like mm. that but the mm. reality is is that if you showcase how accessible your destination is there's mm. a dollar benefit to it right and yeah. sometimes that's what's needed to really drive it home it's not it's not just mm. um it's not just doing the right thing. And that's yeah. really should be the only motivator that, that you need, but you actually yeah. will get um, more visitors there and mm. visitors that spend a longer time and spend more yeah. money. Mm. Okay, thank you. And uh, Monica, how about uh, in the case of for uh, Spain tourism? Yeah, I'm, I mean, um... I mean, when we talk about sustainability, we mm. talk, you know, in the three, I mean, it's not only environment, it's also social, uh, it's mm. also economic uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, I agree. First, you know, I want to say I agree a lot with John when he talks about, you know, infrastructure, accessibility, once you get there, 
because one of the ways uh, we can minimize really the environmental impact is using uh, sustainable transportation when we are at the destination, you know, public transportation, walking, biking. Most cities, uh, at, at least in Spain, you know, they have tourism transport passes. So, you know, this mm -hmm. is, uh, and we are, we have very walkable cities. I mean, you can walk mm -hmm. everywhere, almost in any city of Spain, you know. So mm -hmm. it's important, you know, to, as I say, minimize this environmental impact, uh, also mm -hmm. reducing waste, conserving uh, water, mm -hmm. support the local communities, supporting the local businesses, mm -hmm. uh, develop the skills uh, in the local, so, and the knowledge so they can participate in the tourism industry mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. respect the cultural heritage, you know, mm -hmm. learning about the local culture. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, so the tourists do not disrespect the cultural sites and the local customs. Uh, of course, to put together sustainability uh, with the tourists, what we need to do is to offer responsible travel options. And we yeah. have to be transparent about, about what we do. Uh, mm. We need to let the travelers know what we are doing to be sustainable and responsible. Mm. I was reading the other day an, um, an article by a survey university professor, uh, Xavier Font. Mm. He was saying that you know around 70% of the uh, small companies in Spain do not communicate what they are already doing about sustainability, mm. you know? Mm. And we need to keep in mind that travelers normally assume that being sustainable is the responsibility of the companies. And mm. there's a difference between what people say and their behavior. People mm. normally buy products and services because they are better in their uh, price, convenience, but not yeah. because they are sustainable. But if mm. then they will say they are sustainable consumer, consumers, because yeah. they buy sustainably for you. So, you know, we, we need to to communicate what we are doing because we are all yeah. doing something, you know, um, yeah. uh, to work towards responsible tourism. But we also, I think we need to educate the travelers. Um, mm. I think sometimes is, you know, it's not, uh, sustainability is not a grand gesture by the mm. big company, but it's millions mm. and millions of little actions. So mm. we need to also tell the traveler, you know, little things you can do help a lot. Uh, so, you know, pack light, use mm. uh, reusable water bottles, avoid plastic bags. They can also, you know, when you are about to buy souvenirs to take home, yeah. buy local products, you know, gastronomy, yeah. sweets, uh, mm. olive oil from Spain, uh, mm. arts and crafts that remind you, you know, it creates like emotional connection, but also helps the local businesses. So I mm. think this is like a learning process and we have to, you know, work together, educate the, the consumer and also let the consumer know that we are committed to this responsible tourism. Mm. Mm. And I was actually feverishly writing while you were saying that point just now, uh, Monica, about the million little things uh, that is done. Yeah. And into my mind exactly 10 years ago in 2012 when we hit the 1 billion uh, traveler and remember the, the campaign was that 1 billion travelers 1 billion you know uh, contributions or small actions and suddenly that popped into mind uh, and what you said about how educating the the traveler right and communicating uh, yeah. sustainability so it's, and it's good it's good for them i mean if you you tell them you not use the water bottle they're gonna save mm -hmm. in buying water in the street you know in the plastic bottles and so it, at the same time it's it's a benefit for them so you know mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. can help the environment by being selfish you know so mm -hmm. it's a good thing <laughs> that's right and and i think a lot of what we have been talking about in terms of the authenticity you know, and the immersiveness of the experience, uh, both by uh, yourself and by John, um, it also supports what you said just now about, you know, how sustainability, we focus on the, the three Ps, right? People, planet, and, and profit. And so the, the people part, the engagement of the locals and understanding local culture, uh, and what you mentioned about uh, capacity building um, for destinations, I think, with the COVID, um, when I was doing some a lot of the research on recovery and resilience building at destinations, um, a lot of the stakeholders often talk about uh, capacity building, right, as, as a way to build resilience and sustainability for, for destinations. So thank you uh, for, for bringing that up as well, because I think it's something that increasingly is looking at more, you know, attention uh, in this area. 
Okay, so thank you for that. And so now that we're looking at, you know, as, as uh, travel is resuming in many destinations, um, and as we look at the next phase of travel, uh, in your respective, you know, um, portfolios and destinations, what are some of the opportunities and challenges do you think, um, you know, your destinations face and, ex you know, attractions or experience providers face in terms of the evolving needs of, of travelers and how how can our industry adapt and evolve to meet those needs? So maybe I'll start with John because now John is on top of my screen. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Um, I think the, the opportunities and challenges, uh, the first that comes to mind is the digital landscape, which I think is an opportunity mm -hmm. and a challenge, whether you're talking mm -hmm. about social media, as we've discussed at length, um, or the Google, right, the, the topic that we can't escape, or, or OTAs, they, they offer unprecedented opportunity uh, to, mm -hmm. to represent yourself and showcase what you have. But at the yeah. same time, there's a challenge in cutting through that noise and really being yeah. tactical and strategic and really understanding mm -hmm. how to find your visitor there, how to surface um, the appropriate things to your visitor. Mm -hmm. And so I think with the, the opportunity with digital as always is, is, is to look at the data, right? Look at, mm -hmm. look at the data, follow the trends, keep yourself educated um, and updated and, and be able to, to evolve with those things. You know, as we talked about, you know, wellness and cultural travel and off the beaten path, if you see that that's what your visitors want, then you better be building products that that um, that reach them, you know, accessibility, sustainability, all of those things. You yeah. can't just say, oh, this is what our visitors want and then keep doing the same old thing. Right. You have to you have to change. Um, also, I think, you know, to kind of stay on the digital side, you know, the, the, the top buzzword I think right now is, gen is generative AI. Right, everyone's mm. talking about Chat GPT and, yeah. and all the other tools, <laughs> and I think there's a real opportunity now for a lot of us to to get away from being bogged down in the grunt work, if you will, mm. into you know mm. to to writing that report or or you know crafting the perfect press release or whatever it is you can use the generative AI for mm. is to take some of that um, work off and be more creative. Right. Mm. Go into doing into the things that you never thought you had the time to do. Save some time with these new tools that we have and then use the time that you have um, to do something new, do something mm. different. Um, and I think the most important um, opportunity that we have as we're talking about all the change and we're talking about mm. trying to re reach new visitors and, and reach new platforms and we're talking about new, 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 new. I think the mm. opportunity is to remain who you are at your core. It's yeah. to really focus on the thing that makes you, your destination, your local suppliers, that makes you what you are. Because I think at the end of the day, that's what's going to shine through. There may be, you know, an it destination, um, but that's going to happen every year, right? It seems like every year to three years, there's a new place that everybody needs to go. But I think the consistency of branding, the consistency of messaging, the consistency of the commitment to making your destination one that can welcome all travelers is really mm. the strategy that's going to play off and that's going to pay off in the long run. Mm, mm. And so going back to, you know, who you are as a destination and, and what it represents and so forth. Um, so, yeah, thank you uh, for sharing that as well. And I think that also has a part to play in what you mentioned just now about, you know, how it cuts through the noise and how we can use those messaging uh, creatively to kind of get across uh, that message uh, as well. Okay, uh, thanks so much, uh, John, for sharing that. And uh, how about yourself, Monica? You want to share some? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think on the side of technology, I'm not going to add anything because I think John covered the whole thing, you know, pretty nicely. Um, I, I agree with him also about, you know, cutting the noise and knowing your destination. Because mm. sometimes, I mean, we see also, you know, so many trends, so many studies telling us, what, and, you know, some of them are not for our destination. That's not who we are. So mm. we need to be very clear first who is with data, as John said, you know, who is coming to our country, what they are coming and what mm. uh, they need. Mm. Uh, and that gives us probably a different picture that we see, you know, in those hundred reports that we see every every day. Uh, we uh, conduct some surveys to check the satisfaction of the, the customers, the clients, the tourists coming to Spain. 
And last year, at the end of 2022, we, one of the surveys, uh, which you know, uh, is conducted with and between 70,000 and 20,000 people answering the, the the survey. I mean, what they told us. I'm going to check the numbers because you know I don't know them by heart. Is you know what what they do is we it tell us how satisfied customers, clients, tourists coming to Spain are with uh, several mm -hmm. of our of tourism offers. So you know, 96% are very satisfied with the destination. 94 mm. very satisfied with our leisure offer but one thing that you know uh, was very interesting and these are the points where we have them to check and work on only 75 percent were satisfied on how sustainable we were perceived mm. so you know that goes again to let them know what you are doing mm. and 25 percent of those tourists have visited spain 10 times or more Mm. So, you know, that's a, a number that, you know, is, is, is telling us something about what we do and how diversified we are and what we have to offer. And 55% were planning to return in the next 12 months. Mm. You know, those, so when we look at those numbers, um, mm. it gives us a lot of information at uh, what do we need to improve what do we have and what is the profile? And with that, I mean, of course, then we also, we can decide, you know, uh, with this data, I want to pursue more of this target. Mm. Mm. Oh, we have lost uh, Monica, but just to recap, uh, while we're waiting for her to log back in, um, she was actually sharing about data. Oh, welcome back, Monica. I'm yeah. here. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a river in Spain that goes up and down, you know, the, the, the ground and appears and disappears. So this, I am the Guadiana River today, you know, that river in Spain. So I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know why. I guess no the connection worries. is not that good. No worries. It just brought to light. And, and it's a good summary of what we were talking about, how, you know, data, big data matters and whether the river or the floor, <laughs> the, the, the connection, we adapt, we are resilient. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we are resilient. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that and takes me so. to the challenges, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of your question. And Please, I think the, cha the challenge would be to differentiate mm -hmm. ourselves you know, mm. from the rest of the tourism destination. Mm. And I think sometimes the, the those features that make us apart is not the tourism attraction, but mm. all that goes around it, you know, like the infrastructure, mm. the accessibility, yeah. um, mm. the security, the safety, yeah. the medical attention, the hospitals, mm. the service, you know. Mm. Sometimes, we, I mean, we don't think about it, but things happen when mm. you are on vacation. I mean, mm. when we have little kids, we all check, yeah. you know, how is the medical, the doctor service in the destination mm. you are going to when they grow up mm. or we go on, we forget about that, you know, but, you know, all that makes also mm. part of the, is part of the destination are things mm. that we need to sell with the, with the destination. Mm. And another mm. challenge, I think, apart from the cost of, you know, the rising cost of traveling, yeah. uh, I would say is the impact of climate change. I think mm. any destination yeah. that is not today getting ready for the changes mm. that are going to come with climate change is going to have a hard time um, attracting visitors in the mm. in the future. Yeah, and it's it's becoming increasingly unpredictable as well. I mean, you know, uh, not only healthcare, you know, new variants and you know climate change issues and all that. So that's that's certainly you know something. Um, that we need to think about uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for sharing that. And uh, I see here on the reminder that we have another just couple of minutes left. So maybe I'll just throw it out to your any last comments or statement to share with our audience. Monica. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will just, you know... Uh, encourage people when they travel mm. to learn about the place they're going to visit to engage yeah. with the locals i mm -hmm. think the experience is like i mean for you know for personal experience you know like it doesn't matter even if you just go because you want to relax in a resort and you know but 
learn from the people that are working there, you know, talk to them, uh, be curious about where you are going. You know, mm -hmm. I think it is so rewarding. I think, uh, you know, in fact, I think traveling, uh, mm -hmm. getting to know other countries, other cultures should be mandatory. You know, it shouldn't be an option because mm -hmm. I think it opens your mind. It yeah. makes you understand mm -hmm. other cultures. Yeah. And I think the world would be a much better place to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sure uh, Monica will come back uh, with uh, the app and flow of the connection. So, um, there we go. Oh, Monica, welcome back. Yes, that's <laughs> <laughs> being interesting, huh? <laughs> yes, it's interesting and and yeah. So uh, thank you uh, for sharing uh, those thoughts as well and for uh, coming back uh, to our session. Um, and how about John? Last words from you. I completely agree with Monica. Not to to steal exactly what she said, but, uh, mm -hmm. but you know that's the entire reason that we started NYC Borough Pass because we believe yeah. in that that type of immersive experiential visit to a destination, to getting mm -hmm. to know the people. You know, Monica mentioned earlier about Spain being a very walkable city. And that's that's what New York City is. I, my favorite thing to do in the city is to walk. And it's the, that that's my favorite thing to do on vacation, honestly, in the city is to walk around the city, see the things that maybe you didn't see on Instagram, right? Walk into yeah. a pub and have a pint with a local and ask them where to go. And and that's mm -hmm. how you find yourself from, from, one, from point A to point B to point C in a way that you couldn't have planned that, right? Try the next mm -hmm. time you go to a, a destination, go spend a day or two that you didn't plan out, but something that you didn't book and just see where, mm -hmm. see where that journey takes you and see how much, how much fun that you can have there. Because I think that there is a, a definite balance between, I don't, I don't necessarily see a difference between the destination driven and the experiential driven, or at least there shouldn't be right. You just, because mm -hmm. you're going to a destination that, that is very popular and that people think that they know, doesn't mean that that is um, all there is to that destination. You know, I talked about mm -hmm. our campaign um, before our yeah. find your city, the entire tagline, right. Is New York city, yeah. find your city, find yourself, find your mm -hmm. NYC. And that's, that's yeah. the important part about all of this. It's not just going to mm -hmm. a destination. It's finding your place within that destination. Mm -hmm. And and thank you for that that summary because uh, it really ties up the session that we have when we ask the question about the difference between a kind of destination driven and experience driven and as as what both Monica yourself and John you have shared it aptly uh, summed it up. You know, there's no difference. It's a matter of whether we look at it from the kind of experiential journey of the visitor. I mean, as you said, we can all go to a destination and experience, you know, uh, different aspects of that particular destination based on our own kind of, you know, preferences and so forth. And, and I like that. And I think it is great that people are now, you know, using platforms and digital media to kind of journey or document their journey, you know, uh, and, and to share more of experiences rather than just, you know, iconic destination, um, you know, attractions and stuff like that. So I think that's that's really great. And it, it kind of sums up a lot of what we have discussed today uh, in terms of, you know, how we balance that destination versus the experience part of it. So thank you so much uh, for being here today and sharing, um, you know, what your destinations are doing and what you're doing uh, in, in this space as well. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Eunice. Thank you so much. No problem. And um, so I see that, yes, I see the light flashing. So um, I think I should wrap up. Yeah. So um, as we said, uh, thanks for a really great session. Uh, thanks, you know, for, for sharing uh, your, your thoughts and experiences as well. So we'll wrap up our session. Uh, thank you to the audience for joining us uh, for this uh, particular session. Um, and of course, thank you to Monica and John for being here with us today. Um, so don't forget, there are a lot more other activities and sessions going on. Um, so please join the other sessions in the Halal in Travel uh, Global Summit. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day. <laughs>